Did you know you have the superpower to change the character of a person? If you want to know how, you have to like and subscribe to this video because My Story Animated will give $1,000 to one lucky person who subscribes in the next seven days. Tell your friends, your sister, brother, and mom to subscribe now. Hi, I'm Annie. When I started basic school, I hardly ever talked to anyone. I was so shy and quiet that some of my classmates thought I was a dummy. My kindergarten teacher even told my parents to take me to a doctor and find out what was wrong with me. But dad completely lost his temper with her. Are you dumb? She is too beautiful for there to be anything wrong with her. Why don't you save your advice for some other real dumb kid? But no matter what, my shyness just didn't go away. I didn't talk much to my classmates and they thought I was a snob. As if. Once when I was in the first grade, some of my classmates asked me to share my candy with them, but I just stared back at them and didn't reply. Who do you think you are, you dumb girl? I said, give us candy. I didn't say a word and started walking away. They got angrier and circled me. Suddenly, I opened my mouth and let out an ear-splitting scream. They were so shocked to actually hear my voice that they just stood there stupidly and I managed to escape. But at home, I was a completely different person. I was super chatty and an awesome storyteller. In fact, sometimes my parents begged me to stop talking because I was giving them headaches. Once I kept them awake all night telling them a story I had in my mind about some princess. And because I didn't know how to write well, they spent all night writing it for me. It ended up about 90 pages long. I will do this every night, sweetheart. I can't believe I have such a beautiful daughter in my life. Dad just worshipped me because I was pretty. Mom was different and loved me no matter what. I was still too shy to talk outside my home, but people never stopped trying to become friends with me. And I know why now. It's only because they thought I was cute. But I had to admit, I kind of liked it. When I was in the third grade, one boy threw a piece of paper at me that said, Your smile makes me happy, but your words make me happier. Can I hear them? I blushed, and from that moment, I tried to talk more. So I made new friends and also started taking part in different school activities, but still without talking much. When I was in the eighth grade, my parents helped me publish my first short novel. But it was a failure and people didn't like it. I got sad. Dad didn't take it well and sued the publishers, saying it was their fault. But of course, he lost the case, and I decided to take a break from writing. Until one morning, when our class teacher walked into the classroom with a tall, athletic boy. It really looked like the boy wasn't too happy to join us. Everyone, welcome your new classmate, Peter. Peter had a deep frown and a stupid smile at the same time. He had this funny, grinch face. The teacher told Peter to take a seat right next to me, and I gave him a friendly smile. That's the ugliest smile I've ever seen. Have you heard of toothpaste? I can buy it for you if you don't have money. You can pay me back, maybe with a kiss? Oh, wow. I was about to respond when the teacher started the lesson. It was a French lesson, and he looked completely blank. Hey, do you need any help? From you? You don't look very smart. And I don't need help from a girl when I can use Google Translate on my phone, so buzz off. What a jerk. The next day when the teacher returned the assignments, Peter looked really angry to see a big F on his. What kind of dumb school is this? How can Google be wrong? I took a look at his paper and burst out laughing. That's not even French, you idiot. You translated the whole thing to Spanish. He crumpled up his assignment into a ball and threw it at my face, but I couldn't stop laughing. Boy, how could someone be this stupid? I figured out soon enough that Peter wasn't interested in learning or making friends. Eventually, the whole school realized that Peter was just interested in bullying others. Sometimes he would snatch students' lunch and threaten to beat them if they reported him. I was one of those unlucky students. But after the third time he did it, I reported him to the principal, and he was put in detention. When Peter returned from detention, he looked straight into my eyes. You are going to pay for this. Well, you should know your limits. If you ever try to bother me again, I swear you will regret it, and I might even tell Dad. Aw, Daddy's daughter. Look at me. I'm so scared. Oh, Mommy, hug me. Once he tried to knock my books out of my hands, when suddenly, a bunch of boys behind him came and said, Dude, why are you being like this with a pretty girl like her? Wait, what? So if I wasn't pretty, that would be okay? Well, pretty girls deserve special treatment, you know? So now we're all here to stop him. You can't annoy pretty girls. Well, thanks for your caring, but girls can defend themselves. And I pushed through them and left. Told you guys, girls are crazy, especially the pretty ones. Now get lost, all of you, or else. This Peter did whatever he wanted. It seemed he wasn't afraid of anyone, not even the principal. I really hated him. One rainy day, Peter came to school completely drenched, and it seemed like he'd fallen sick. He was shivering nonstop, and the principal said he'd call his parents to take him home. But to everyone's surprise, Peter screamed, 
No, I'm fine. I don't want to go home. Please let me stay. You have to go home and rest. <laughs> no, I don't. I could run a marathon right now. Just some water and I'll be good to go. With that, he picked up the glass with his trembling hands and suddenly dropped it all over my assignment. Later at recess, I found him huddled on the bleachers and he was hugging a worn out teddy bear. Dude, is that a stuffed toy? Don't insult Mr. Smith. Oh, he has a name? Is he like your little baby? Is he adopted or did you give birth to him? Shut up! Can't you leave me alone? You're sick and you need to go home. You look much prettier when you're quiet. Now stop acting like you care. Ugh, why do you have to be like this? I'm trying to be nice. Who asked you? Mind your own business. As soon as he was fine, he went right back to being the jerk he always was. I started writing about him in my notebook. Peter was such an interesting person for a villain. I couldn't believe that having someone as horrible as him in my life was actually making me want to get back to writing. One day when I was leaving the cafeteria, Peter blocked my way and demanded that I give him my lunch. We're not in kindergarten, idiot, and I ate it. And I'm not afraid of you, now shoo. As I walked past him, he suddenly pulled at my bag and everything spilled out. A couple of boys immediately ran over to help me and I gathered my stuff and left angrily. What an immature jerk. When I went home, I found out that my notebook was missing. I rushed straight to the locker the next morning and was going through all my stuff frantically when I heard Peter behind me. Looking for this? Give that back, you jerk! He threw it at me, giving me that stupid smile of his. Got what I needed. And with that, he walked away. I had no idea what he was up to, but I found out soon enough. Later that day, the whole school was gathered in the gym for a lecture on fire safety. As we stood waiting around for it to start, suddenly Peter jumped onto the stage and tapped the mic for everyone's attention. While we are all gathered here to talk about our safety in school, I just want to say, I don't feel safe at all. How can I when I have a stalker right here? Oh no, no, no. Just then the large screen behind him flickered and images from my notebook showed up. As the sketches and the things I'd written about him flashed on the screen, I wanted to disappear. And it's none other than the girl everyone adores, Annie. She's obsessed with me. Guess just because you're pretty on the outside doesn't mean you can't be a total creep inside. So everyone be careful. You might wake up someday to find yourself a villain in her novel. She's cuckoo. As everyone's eyes turned to me, I could feel panic rise in my chest. But it's okay, sweetie. I can still be your boyfriend. Want to hang out sometime? As I ran out of the gym, I turned around and said, You're bad. I hate you. As I walked into the school the next day, my legs were trembling. I just stared down at my feet as I entered the classroom. The lesson started, and when the teacher asked me to read my essay out loud, I just looked down and shook my head. Just as everyone was leaving for the cafeteria, Peter hung back. Hey, Annie, are you okay? If this is about the gym thing, everyone knows it was just a harmless joke. I just stared at him silently with angry tears, and I threw my lunch at his face and walked out of the school. This time he didn't respond and looked a bit guilty. Peter didn't come to school the next few days. I don't know why, but I actually felt worried. One day he finally showed up. Hey, I still don't like you, but I made sure to make notes for you when you came back. And no, girls aren't dumb. We can be emotional sometimes, and that's something we're proud of. Just then, to my shock, Peter broke down and started to cry. Annie, I, I'm really sorry. I don't know why I'm this way. I just act out because of things going on in my own life. Then he told me about his family, how his mother had passed away when he was six, and he was left all by himself with his stepdad. He's mean and stupid and doesn't even take care of me. And one day when I'm old enough, I'm going to punch him in the face. I finally saw why Peter was like that. He was just a frustrated kid who needed help. Next day during lunch, Peter jumped on one of the tables and announced something. Everyone got quiet and listened to him. Hey everyone, I'm just here to apologize for everything I did to all of you. I still think some of you are weird and I don't like most of you, but that didn't give me the right to treat anyone like that. So, as they say in French... Lo siento. Dude, that's Spanish. Just get down. Everyone burst into laughter and Peter gave me a hug. Thank you for lighting up my life. I promise I will become a better person. Hmm, no, not really. Only under one condition. Make me the irresistible, handsome, great hero in your novel. Helping Peter become a better person is my greatest achievement. Now he is a medical doctor with a beautiful wife and he named his child Annie after me. And me, I'm a writer now.